Hello everyone, this is Fantasy Ask, and welcome back to Clan Gen, the Warrior Cats Clan Generated game. When we left off in the previous episode, and it appears it is now Leaf Bear, when we left off, our little apprentice, um, Smokepaw, sorry, the name slipped for a second, Smokepaw, was trying to act a little bit mature, or I suppose not act, he was truly trying to embody uh, maturity. And uh, he was attempting to actually resolve this, you know, kitten conflict that has been happening for the past two moons um, between Locust Kit, Duck Kit, and Scale Kit. Sandy Kit has kind of been there, like on the periphery, but not really as involved as the other three. And it all started because Locust Kit was trying to defend Smoke Paw from getting his joke stolen by Blue Stripe. So the kittens, the, the, the two sets of kittens are feuding and Smokepaw was trying his best to kind of resolve it. I don't know how, how far he got in that or how well he did it. But uh, I think, you know, at the end of everything, the kittens more or less have decided to befriend one another because I think it ended on Scale Kit, right? Who Smokepaw was trying to uh, defend throughout it all. Um, it ended up with Scale Kit being a bit con concerned about Duck Kit and um, talking to Smoke Paw uh, about the way that, you know, their mutual friend might be feeling. So I think everyone is feeling a little bit more peaceful and hopeful, but uh, then again, maybe we should check up on what they actually think and what they're doing today to figure out what's going on in their heads. So let us begin with Frostar. Frostar feels bad about never being invited to shed tongues. Oh my goodness, Frostar. This is this is our lonesome leader, guys. Apparently, even though she has her mate in Dawn Valley, she has her son and apprentice in Smokepaw, she just has never been invited, or at least she's never, you know, frequently invited to share tongues with any of the other cats, and she's kind of missing some of that connection and affection. Oh, Frostar. Oh, Frostar. You're making me sad. Snail Dusk is looking forward to the next gathering, so I think she's feeling quite good as deputy, especially after she and Frostar bonded a little bit over Frostar, um, I think looking after Snail Dusk's mate Daisy Wish during a storm that happened. So Snail Dusk, she's, she's feeling pretty good. Child Stripe is making new nests, and I know some of us were feeling quite bad for the fact that Child Stripe doesn't have a mate when everyone else does. And the fact that she's making new nests right now, it does tug at the heartstrings, but we'll have to see what the future holds for Child Stripe. For now, I think the clan is um, handling things pretty decently, and I mean, Child Stripe does have her hands full being a medicine cat, so, you know, a mate might not necessarily be something that is on the forefront of her mind. So, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Plus, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we have new apprentices in this episode, so who knows, she might actually get an apprentice. She might be assigned an apprentice by the clan leader, and you know, she'll have someone to more or less keep her company. So we'll have to see. Bloom Freckle took a nap in the clearing and woke up under a blanket of snow, and she's still recovering from birth. Yeah, it is... I, I know, I know Bloom Freckle, it is Leaf Bear. It is really cold, isn't it? It, it is, it is. Okay, Iris Quiver wishes he could take the day off. Oh, Iris Quiver. Is it because he's injured? It's okay, buddy. Nobody expects you to go off and be a warrior, you know? That's the whole reason he got injured. So, you can relax. And maybe he's thinking that once he gets better, it would be so nice to have a day off. Because he can't really do anything right now. And he was getting frustrated, but maybe he's thinking, you know, once once I recover, I just want to take one day off. Maybe just spend it with Cicada Lotus. So that's that's kind of sweet. And then Cicada Lotus convinces Daisy Wish to play Moss Ball with him. Oh, you know what? 
I can imagine that Iris Kuba is probably looking out of the medicine den and he's seeing Cicada Lotus play Moss Bowl with Daisy Wish and he's kind of brimming with jealousy and he's thinking, I just want a day off when I'm a warrior so I can do that with Cicada Lotus because we're either out on patrol or Cicada Lotus is busy trying to maintain the, the camp walls and the camp defenses and we're never really, you know, spending too much time together. So maybe, maybe that's what's going through his mind. Blue Stripe is humming a tune he heard near a two-leg place. Mmm. He might have to be careful on that. Because, I don't know if you guys remember, but Bloom Freckles, Lost Apprentice, Darkpaw, um, actually on his first patrol was sent out with a bunch of kitty pets, including Juliet Star. And they came across a two-leg cabin, and the stuff he kind of learned from the kitty pets made it so that Dark Paul's perspective was really different to Bloom Freckle's perspective. And so they clashed on their opinions quite a bit, and they never resolved that. So I feel like Bloom Freckle kind of views maybe two legs and two-leg things with, you know, a lot of skepticism. So Blue Stripe, you gotta be careful with that tune, bud. Smokepaw is exhausted after a patrol. Oh, Smokepaw. He's really exhausted. And I imagine it's not just the patrol. It's probably all of the mediating, essentially, he was trying to do between the kittens. All of the conflict resolution he was trying to work them through. He was probably exhausted from that. Daisy Wish is feeling rather chippy today. Okay, so I think she is feeling... Actually, she was playing earlier in the day, supposedly, or I, I guess right now, she was playing with um, Cicada Lotus. So maybe that's why she's feeling really good, because she's got nice company. Dawn Valley thinks about going on a little jaunt outside camp. Okay, so I suppose he's been lounging around for a few moons, and now he's a little bit bored of lounging around. And, you know, his son just came back from patrol and is exhausted, so... Oh, his first patrol, they're gonna go out on patrol again in a second. But uh, he, he's curious about what's going on outside of camp. Locust Kit is getting a badger ride from Dawn Valley. Oh! You know guys, I was really, really confused. I was really confused a few episodes back. I don't know who it was, but someone was thinking about getting a badger ride. And I was so confused. Like, when the hell were these kits riding badges? Because <laughs> I was literally thinking about these kits riding badges. But now I understand, they're not riding badges, they're getting a badger ride from one of the other cats. Ah, that's adorable. So Locust Kid is actually getting a badger ride from Dawn Valley. Dawn Valley the Elder. Guys, Locust Kid has consistently been the little kitten who has been seeking out the sick cats, the elder retired cats, the injured cats, um, the the pregnant cats who are kind of nest bound he's constantly been seeking them out and giving them company making sure that they don't feel lonely that all of his you know energy and excitement he's sharing it with them that is just too too cute i don't think i've seen any of the other kids interact as much with you know um cats in those positions than i have with locust kid and he's also been helping out the medicine cat at the medicine cat den so, I really like this kid. I really like him. Duck Kid, meanwhile, is stretching out. Okay, so she's not doing anything too crazy. Sandy Kid can't keep up with Bloom Freckle, his mother. Oh, Sandy Kid? I'm gonna say, this is probably, um, maybe he can't keep up, not physically, because Bloom Freckle is actually nest bound. Um, or, you know, she's in the medicine cat den since she's still recovering from birth, but I think Sandy Kid probably can't keep up with something his mother is explaining or a story she's telling, And but he has an active imagination. So, so, oh, you know what it is. His mother's probably trying to explain something to him and he's getting distracted by his imagination, which is like way more exciting than what's being explained to him. And so he's he's getting distracted and he's losing losing track of what she's saying. And then when she's checking in with him about whether or not he's understanding what's being conveyed, he's just tilting his head and giving her like a really charming, charming smile. That's really cute. 
and then Scaled Kit got caught in a sudden downpour and is not happy about it. Oh, Scaled Kit. And she's a moss pool hunter, apparently. Um, but yeah, that's, that's not too fun. That is not too fun. She's feeling a little bit cranky right now. And I can't imagine that she would feel very cranky in water because, you know, she had an incident in, I think, the last episode where she fell into a river and her father, Blue Stripe, had to get her out of it and save her life. So, yeah. And you know, as she gets older and older, I can't help but feel she looks like a little leopard, doesn't she? She kind of looks like a leopard. It's kind of cool, though. It's kind of cool. Okay, we are ready now to send out some of our cats to go on patrol. So Cicada Lotus will go on her own. The cold of Leaf Bear might have killed off a lot of greenery, but Child Stripe knows that the dandelions are only plain dead. If she can get her paws on a plant, the roots will still hold fresh, milky white sap. Proceed. Child Stripe can't say it's fun, swiping away snow to scrunch with stems and roots of wilted dandelions below, but what matters currently is that it's possible. Okay, so she had a successful time out on patrol. Then we'll send the other cat to Smoke Paw, Blue Stripe, Cicada Lotus, Snail Dusk, and Frostar. And out of these cats, Snail Dusk, Cicada Lotus, and Blue Stripe actually don't have apprentices yet. Obviously, we have, you know, Child Stripe and Bloom Freckle. Bloom Freckle is currently the nest bound mediator. And then we have, I, I should say, the medicine den bound. Um, and then we have. Um, Chard Stripe, the medicine cat. So we have five potential cats that Frostar has to decide between for the new apprentices, the two new apprentices, Locust Kit and his sister, Duck Kit. So I think she's going to be paying attention to this patrol to see if any of these particular cats might make appropriate mentors and then she'll probably go back to camp and um, check up on the other two, so I guess we'll see. But then again, news of Child Stripe's patrol and her like successful gathering of herbs would also be reported back to Frostar, right? So let's go ahead and see. There are dark clouds on the horizon, and Frostar wonders if the patrol should continue. Guys, this could end up being very dark. Hopefully it's not, but let's go ahead and take a look. It's not worth the risk. Blue Stripe convinces the patrol to head home. Okay, I did click on the right thing, right? Right? I think I clicked on proceed. I think I did. But if this is the case, I mean, Blue Stripe is insecure. I suppose he's decided not to go ahead. And now I'm... Did I click on the right thing? I think I did. I think I clicked on proceed. I usually never click on do not proceed because where's the fun in that? I'm gonna have to go back in my recording and check, but I'm pretty sure I clicked on proceed, guys. Anyways, blue stripe, regardless of whether it was do not or it was proceed, he has convinced the patrol not to go into that because he is quite insecure and, you know, he and his mate, Bloomfreckle, have had a fight over this beforehand. Like, if one of them is lost, are they going to take another mate? It was a bit of an incident, their first kind of big fight. And he feels very strongly about getting back home to his mate and his kids. So he's not going to take any chances. Okay, I wonder if that might be something that Frosta notices. Like, maybe Blue Stripe is going to be very careful with a future apprentice. So we'll, we'll have to see. And that is all we have going on for patrols. So let us... Okay, Fern Clan, last time. We will try and be really nice to Otter Clan. We'll offer some praise to one of our allies. And I will cut the recording here, guys, and then we'll be back in a second. I did go back and actually check the recording, and I did click proceed, guys. But Blue Stripe... Blue Stripe just won, won with his opinion, and his, his caution, his insecure nature, kind of convinced everyone to come back. And I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised, because he would be very sensitive around water right now. I mean, right over here, Scale Kit fell into a river, so I feel like he would be very, very cautious about 
anything to do with dark clouds, rain, potential floods, you know, all of that. So let's go ahead, skip a moon, and see our new apprentices and also which mentors Frostar picks for them. Okay, here we go. At the gathering, Frostar informs Otter Clan's leader that Feather Clan ap apprentices uh, idolized Otter Clan warriors and relations have improved. Nice. Bloom Freckle has healed from the strain of delivering her litter, which is really good. Rumors reach your clan that the kitty pet Wikipedia has died recently. Okay, this is one of the cats we were aware of, but we never really uh, got to know. So she has apparently um, joined the afterlife, or you know, the cats that in the wandering place, I think it's called. Okay guys, Locust Kit runs up to the front of the crowd, eager to get his new name. When he's called Locust Paw for the first time, Snail Dusk and Cicada, Lotus, uh, Cicada Lotus's voices can be heard the loudest as the clan welcomes the new apprentice. So let's take a look at him and see who he got as his mentor because it doesn't specify here. And... Snail Dusk! Okay guys, so this is him! So Locust Paw has actually gone ahead and he has been assigned as his mother who is the deputy okay that's kind of interesting i wonder if frosta and snail dust because they spend a lot of time working together maybe want their sons to who are also close in age maybe they want their sons to get a bit of practice kind of working together as well, almost like a younger version of that leader and deputy dynamic. But also, maybe Frosta feels that, you know, Locus Poor is someone who is now bold with an active imagination, maybe needs the loving hand of Snail Dusk to kind of curb that a little bit, or maybe round out his personality more, because he's very close to his father, and he's very much like his father. But maybe he needs, you know, some of his mother's touch as well. And who knows, this might also be Frostar's way of trying to help Snail Dusk maybe understand her son more and get a bit closer to him. Because they're definitely not as close as Snail Dusk is to her daughter. Next up we have Duck Kit loudly complains as Snail Dusk pulls her over to quickly groom her pelt. She manages to wriggle away and scurry off to the front of the crowd for his ceremony, where she is renamed to Duckpaw and is apprenticed to Blue Stripe. Oh wow! Okay, there we go, there we go! So her mentor is not her father, but her mentor is Blue Stripe. Guys, I think on that patrol, I think Frostar really appreciated Blue Stripe's caution. And, you know, with Duckpaw having been shy when she was young, and then the, you know, terrible near-death experiences she had, maybe Frosta felt as though a cautious mentor would be the best kind of mentor to get her out of her shell. And it seems as though she has developed into a bit of a lonesome personality, so we'll have to see how that pans out, but I think this will be good for her. I think her getting away from her mother, who she's very attached to, might be good for her. And actually, Blue Stripe as a mentor will also help a lot because Blue Stripe has experienced being insecure and being attached to his mother, who was his mentor. And I suppose not really getting the opportunity to go out and push his boundaries and experience things. So I think he might be able to balance the caution and insecurity he has with, you know, maybe the the hope that duck paw can kind of do a little bit more than he was made to do so that's kind of exciting i like the pairings that have been made and that's all we have for like the main events now it's time for us to dive into relationships and see how that is going okay cicada lotus wants to ask a clan mate to eat with him but they're busy with blue stripe okay another instance of a clan mate so we are going to go ahead and check his relationships and this is a negative effect so i assume it's someone cicada lotus really likes and that's why he's kind of jealous so who does cicada lotus really really like right now um relationships 
Iris Quiver. So the Cicada Lotus, okay, we'll say it's Iris Quiver then. He probably wanted to go ahead and actually eat with Iris Quiver, but Iris Quiver was busy eating with Blue Stripe. Well, you know, <laughs> you know Cicada Lotus. Okay, Bloom Freckle notices one of her friends talking to Smoke Paw. And she is kind of jealous over this. So her friend's talking to Smoke Paul. Which one of her friends? Let's go ahead and check that. Let's go ahead and check that. And she said friends, not mate. And like, I feel like clanmate counts as like everyone. Clanmate counts as like friends or counts as family or mates. But if they specify friends, then it must not be like a mate. So which friend of yours is going ahead uh, Child Stripe. Child Stripe is talking to Smoke Paw. And Bloom Freckles being a little bit jealous? Okay. Okay. Bloom Freckle backs up one of Blue Stripe's claims during one of Blue Stripe's arguments. Okay, that's kind of nice. But who is he arguing with? Who is he arguing with? Okay, again, we're gonna dive into relationships because I want to know who he is arguing with. Let's go ahead and check who he has the least relationship in the clan with. Okay. So the... Oh, wait, no. I'm in the wrong... I'm on the wrong cat! Blue Stripe! Blue Stripe! So he was arguing with Locust Paw. Okay, so Blue Stripe was arguing with Locust Paw. He was in an argument with Locust Paw. And you are his sister's apprentice. Okay, they were arguing about something. Maybe they were arguing about um, his technique. Maybe Locust Paw was like, I know my sister better. She needs to do like she 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 needs to do this. And Blue Stripe's thinking, but I'm her mentor and I think she needs to do this. And so they argued over that. And then hold on a second. Hold on a second. And then Bloom Freckle came over, Blue Stripe's mate, and she helped to back up Blue Stripe's uh, claims and, you know, why he was doing the way he was doing things. So that's kind of nice. Okay, when explaining something, Frost is surprised that Scale Kit understands. Okay, I mean, she is really, really teeny tiny. She's one of the youngest members, she and her brother. And Frost Eye is the oldest, so I suppose it is kind of surprising when, you know, the oldest, most experienced cat is saying something, and the youngest, most inexperienced cat is understanding, so that's kind of cute. Okay, Frost Eye sees Iris Quiver stand up for a clanmate despite the pushback from his peers. Okay, so if that's the case, we're gonna see who he has the closest relationship with. I'm assuming it's Cicada Lotus, but let's, let's go check, because that's who he's standing up for, we're gonna say. And yes, it's Cicada Lotus. Okay, I mean, no surprise there because they are made, so it makes sense that it's standing up for him. But, um, yeah. I wonder why the others were, like, pushing back about it. So Cicada Lotus... Hmm. Maybe Cicada Lotus was, uh, je actually, earlier on. This is why the relationship thing is really good that we check up on. Because according to our story, Cicada Lotus wanted to spend time with Iris Quiver, but they were busy with the jewel, uh, geez, Blue Stripe, so he got jealous. And then later on, I mean, it kind of all ties in, guys, because later on, Blue Stripe had an argument with Cicada Lotus's son. And so I assume that following that, um, you know, everyone was probably. Um, or maybe Cicada Lotus actually went to back his son up, because Bloom Freckle backed up Blue Stripe, so maybe Cicada Lotus went to back up his son, not necessarily because Blue Stripe was wrong and his son was right, but because he was jealous of Blue Stripe and he wasn't seeing reason. So then everyone was like, oh, come on, Cicada Lotus, you're getting in the way of, like, someone's, you know, apprenticeship. Um, and so Iris Quiver kind of maybe understanding that his mate was a little bit jealous, um, stood up for him and took his side just a little bit. So there we go. Look at that. Okay, Daisy Wish and Duck Kit. 
always learn something new when they're together. Okay, that's kind of sweet. Daisy Wish and Locust Kit try to say tongue twisters. And I love the amount. I actually really like how much time Duck Kit and Locust Kit. And so this was actually before they became apprentices. Sorry. This was before they became apprentices. But I imagine there was already, or Frosta maybe had already spoken to those particular cats about being, you know, potential mentors. So Blue Stripe would maybe have had like an inkling that he was going to be chosen as a mentor so that, you know, he could be prepared as well. So interesting. And then Duck Kit and Locust Kit over here, uh, they're spending time with Daisy, which is, which is very nice with Daisy Wish. Um, Snail Dusk and Sandy Kit agree about something trivial. Okay, so Snail Dusk, yep, Sandy Kit, that's adorable. Iris Quiver keeps asking Snail Dusk if she trusts him. That is a fascinating question, Iris Quiver. I wonder why you were so, so, like, worried about this and stressed about this. I mean, whatever drama you guys had is like way, way behind you. So that's intriguing. Uh, Blue Stripe motivated Iris Kuba to get out of his nest this morning. Okay. And that's fascinating because actually, no, Blue Stripe and Iris Kuba have been, uh, I think, quite good friends of late. No? They have been. I mean, they're father and son, which is another thing I forgot. Oh my goodness, guys. The relationships. There's too many relationships. Because I completely forgot that Iris Quiver and Blue Stripe are father and son. So Cicada Lotus over here is literally being jealous of his mate and his mate's son spending time together. Like, come on, Cicada Lotus. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so silly. I mean, all of the rest of what we said still stands, but the fact is, you know, he's being a bit childish. So I can kind of see how Iris Quiver probably could tell that his mate is being a little bit childish, and that's why everyone's kind of pushing back. But he's, he's trying to, you know, give in and be a little bit supportive. Okay, interesting. But that's, that's really nice, that blue stripe helped his father out of his nest because I think Iris Kuba is still injured. I'm not sure, but I think he's still injured. So maybe he's feeling a bit um, down or unmotivated. Okay, Iris Kuba eats with Sandy Kit all the time. That is too cute because Sandy Kit is his grandson. So grandfather and grandson eating together all the time. I feel like Iris Kuba actually, guys, I mean, now he's starting to spend more time with his son, but I feel like when Blue Stripe was really young. I mean, Daisy Wish was all over him, but I feel like Iris Kuba barely spent time with his son. I feel like he was always hanging out with the other kids. So it's kind of nice to see a different side of him and see him actually spending a lot of time with his grandson and his granddaughter. So I like that. Okay, Sandy Kit helps Dawn Valley get a thorn out of his paw. That is too cute. That is too cute. And let's see, Dawn Valley notices that Smokepaw is never congratulated for his accomplishments as much as everyone else. I think Dawn Valley, again, father-son relationship, he probably notices how much Smokepaw like, goes above and beyond to do things. And people kind of just accept the fact that Smokepaw is always, you know, going out of his way to help everyone. But because they kind of just accept that they might forget to appreciate it but Dawn Valley notices and he appreciates which is so so cute okay Child Stripe considers Bloom Freckle to be one of her close friends okay that's really nice Child Stripe and Smokepaw notice a cloud is shaped like a bird okay so they bonded just a little bit Child Stripe and Smokepaw which is well it's not a positive effect but this is kind of cute because like we've seen they're constantly butting heads so I guess maybe now that Smokepaw is becoming a little bit older that rebellious streak of his that wants to keep butting heads with Child Stripe is like going down a bit but their saga have been going on since like Smokepaw was a kid so that's kind of cute 
Blue Stripe and Daisy Wish talk about what they see in the clouds. Okay, so Blue Stripe again is spending some time with his mother over here. Smokepaw and Frostar agree about something trivial. So another mother and son duo who actually have, I feel like, been going pretty good. So I think Frostar becoming Smokepaw's mentor was actually a good move because that has, I think, allowed Smokepaw to understand his mother's responsibilities and maybe why she was unable to spend too much time with him when he was a kid. Um, and it, it has allowed him to like appreciate his mother more, but also kind of learn where and how he can help her do things better. Okay, Locust Paw. So at this point, they've had their apprentice ceremonies, right? Hold on a second. Uh, I think they have at this point. I think before this point, they were still kids. Okay, so Locust Paw is trying to guess what his and Smoke Paw's warrior names will be. Oh, that's so cute! Especially because Smoke Paw is actually going to become a warrior, guys, in the next episode. So it's kind of really nice to see that Locust Paw is trying to guess that. And, you know, I feel like I've, this has kind of been an undercurrent. Not as overt as, as some of the other relationships, maybe. But I have noticed that Locust Paw and Smoke Paw are actually quite close. And I feel like this is a lot from Locust Paw's side. I think he looks up to Smoke Paw quite a lot, almost like an older brother. And he is actually very protective of Smoke Paw. And we kind of saw it when he defended Smoke Paw's jokes from Blue Stripe, like trying to steal it, you know, he was, it was like Locust Paw was copywriting Smoke Paw's uh, jokes. So he was doing that, and even now he's like hanging out with Smoke Paw, trying to figure out what the warrior names will be. So this is, this is kind of cute that, that we see like a bit of a friendship developing here. Okay, Duck Paw thinks Frostar has interesting things to talk about, which is very, very nice and very good. That she's finding the, the leader fascinating. Sandy Kit and Snail Dusk joke around about how bad the other clans smell. Okay, that's kind of cute. They're joking about something. Scale Kit asks Sandy Kit to teach her how to sing so well. Okay, the siblings. So we have the younger siblings spending time with each other and bonding. I actually really like that the two sets of, like, um, two sets of, you know, two litters, or litters of two that we had two sets of kittens that we had. Uh, I like that they're both really close to each other and they're very protective of each other because, you know, the, the other clanborn cats we've had, which has only been Blue Stripe and Smoke Paw, they've been alone, like alone kittens. So they haven't had like anyone else in their litter to bond with like this. So it's really nice to see that there isn't really much of a rivalry going on. There is really, really like defensive behavior going on. And I think maybe even more so because we had two litters of kittens born like back to back and they didn't have that many moons between them. So I can kind of see how you would get into like more fights with maybe people in your own age group and you know, you'd kind of go back to your sibling and you'd back each other up like that. So that's adorable, but that's all we have for relationships this time around. And I'm just gonna quickly dive into the cat list so that we can, you know, once more see these guys a little bit closer. So okay, Iris Cove, I guess, is still sick. So Bloom and Freckle is feeling a lot better. So she's uh, recovered. Iris Cove is still injured from his claw wound and has been for two moons. Hopefully he feels a little bit better. Um, and let's see. Yes, Locust Paw, Duck Paw, they have aged up, which is very, very exciting. And it's kind of cute that the sprites are like the same sprites, but you know, um, like flipped. So that's kind of cute. Um, Smoke Paw, he's 11 moons. So yeah, he is going to be becoming a warrior in the next episode. So that's going to be very, very exciting for him because I, I cannot wait to see his like proper coat pattern as an adult like what is he gonna look like as an adult because he has been a white cat that's had just like this little heart of ginger on his side and i'm very curious to see if that's actually gonna like spread to anything else or if he's literally just gonna be a white cat with his cute little ginger heart so we'll have to see how that goes 
But okay guys, with that said and done, I'm gonna leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.